Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all really, really well. So today's reading is going to be for divine soulmate connections where there is a third party involved or some kind of a karmic situation, okay, if it's not a partner. I do the reading as if it is a karmic partner on the masculine side, but as I always say, um, if you are a feminine watching and you are also involved in a karmic situation, some of these energies might also resonate for you as well. Okay, so just take the messages as they resonate, keeping in mind that this is a general reading, so it's not going to be everybody's situation. Um, but if you want more specific details, you can always book a personal reading with me, and you can find all that information in the description box below this video. Let's see, what else? Um, I am still doing um, cord cutting sessions. I know I've been mentioning them every video, but not everybody watches every video, so that's why I keep mentioning it. If you want more details about those, you can find a post that I made recently on my community page. And yeah, I will likely be sharing some really interesting stories concerning um, cord cutting, which I think might be helpful for some of you. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And I think that is it. So we're going to start by looking at the masculine's energy towards their karmic situation, their energy towards their feminine, and then we'll also take a look at the feminine's energy as well as what might be coming up in the near future. Okay, so let's get started. Let's see what is going on with the masculine's currently, what do we need to know? All right, we have success. Okay, really, really positive. Let's see what else. What is this success about? I feel like they're passing some tests. Um, and a lot of these tests, you know, like, it might be something that you wouldn't even think is related to, to their goals concerning this situation, right? Concerning their divine soulmate. Um, but... There's something here that I'm getting that they are, they're passing. It's like they're passing some tests, <clears throat> actually succeeding, like actually being on the road that they are meant to be on and overcoming certain obstacles, even if it's in a way where it's difficult for somebody to understand from the outside. All right. And then the second card we got here is resilience, which is really interesting because I feel like that is the exact same card we got in the last reading <laughs> for this. Um, okay, so there's a lot of success concerning their resilience. I think it was, I actually think I was talking about this in the last two videos that I've made, um, where I was saying that it's like the masculines have built up endurance and tolerance for not being happy. And I feel like what this is about is them actually realizing that and beginning to shed some of that burden right that um <clears throat> that that brings that tolerance wanting to break free from that so there's some tests that they have been passing concerning concerning the resilience and the endurance that they have built up and as i said in the other reading this is also about them getting stronger being able to push through certain certain obstacles here especially concerning this tolerance so i will get just a few more because i do want to get a little more specific here before we get into the tarot. So let's see, what else for these masculines, please? Okay, we have mute, free will, and self-worth. Okay, um, I feel like overall, and I, again, I feel like this has been like a recurring theme for a while now with this mute card. They have been a little bit standoffish, standoffish um, just holding back energetically from the world. And I'm getting that this is true concerning both their karmic situation, karmic partner, their divine feminine, just friends, family, just society overall. It's like they're keeping to themselves. Um, and one of the things that they are learning throughout this is about their own free will. And I feel like this is like a big question, right? And their, their ability to exercise free will is directly associated or correlated with their sense of self-worth. So it's like, 
the lower their sense of self-worth, the less they exercise their own free will, the more that they are influenced by others. And that makes sense, right? That's true for all of us. And so what I'm getting here is that it's like they're pulling away from society in order to break free from the influence that other people have on them, whether that be a partner, whether that be relatives, friends, society as a whole, whatever that is, even just a particular um, social circle. So yeah, they're, that's what they are succeeding at. This is what they are, um, what I'm referring to as passing tests. It's like instead of being um, influenced and manipulated by others, and when I say manipulated, I don't mean that necessarily in the very negative way. I mean just allowing themselves. It's like they're actually manipulating their own selves by other people's expectations. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense to you. It's not that someone else is purposely manipulating the masculine, although of course that could also be the case. That's just, it's just not what I'm talking about here. It's not someone else deliberately manipulating the masculine. It's the masculine allowing themselves to be manipulated um, even when there is no manipulation. It's like they're just allowing their, their views and their behaviors to be swayed by other people and it's stemming from their own lack of sense of self-worth because they want to please others or because they want to be seen in a particular way. So there have been tests from the universe and the masculine is passing because they're being mute. They're pressing mute to all of these external influences. Um, and this is actually a result of them increasing their own sense of self-worth. So that's why they're keeping their distance, because they want to focus on their own free will, on what it is that they want, what, is, what are their own beliefs, not the beliefs that other people have imposed on them. And in some way, this is going to also relate to their divine counterpart, whether it's directly or indirectly. All right, so let's get into the tarot. Let's see what is their energy towards their karmic situation or just what is going on for them overall. What do we need to know? Well, let's see. Okay, we have the Two of Swords in reverse, the Two of Pentacles, and then the Eight of Cups in reverse. Okay, so I feel like this is a masculine who may have gone back on a particular decision. Um, yeah, <laughs> actually, it's very clear. This is someone who has gone back on a particular decision. And I feel like that particular decision was to walk away from a situation that was not compatible for them. Um, and then there, it, it proved to be pretty difficult. Um, so they either went back to it or um, just didn't fully detach, didn't fully um, walk away. Okay. So hopefully this helps. This might help some of you to understand if, if I am tapping into your particular masculine or the group that your masculine falls under. And again, you know, keep in mind, there, there are no like, you know, um, perfectly <laughs> squared out boxes of where, you know, each masculine falls under. They overlap, okay? Well, let's see, what else? What is going on? Especially in their headspace. Let's do that. All right, six of pentacles, the king of swords in reverse, and justice. Mm. This is why they're having this um, like realization or this success because this is somebody who like I said you know had made a decision or at least they had that outcome in their minds but they ended up either not acting on it or like you know maybe beginning to take the steps and then you know either went back or just didn't fully complete it in some way all right so because of that 
they find themselves, they're finding themselves in a situation where it's like, you know, it's very disappointing. <laughs> and that's why they've had like all these tests like thrown at them and now they're passing because they don't want that to happen again. They don't want to take a step and then only, you know, to go back. So for those masculines that this happened to, they're learning from that successfully. They're understanding that, you know, they've built up tolerance to this and they're not liking that. They want to exercise their own free will. Um, so basically this, this particular masculine or group of masculines, um, it's like they're, they're back. They found themselves back to giving to this situation and not liking it. Like I said, it's like they know that they went back on a decision here that was made, right? Justice is here. And they want that decision to actually play out. And that's why justice is upright, knowing that they never fully executed it with the King of Swords being in reverse. And again, the reason why was because they felt like they needed, for whatever reason, for each of them it's going to be different, um, to give something to this situation. Right? Again, allowing themselves to be manipulated by what they think that others want them to do or you know how they're going to be viewed by others, etc. Let's see what is going on. Either even, hmm. I kind of want to see what's going on emotionally because we don't really have any emotional cards out. Um, yeah, so let's see that. All right, we have the Seven of Swords completely sideways. I see it more being upright. Um, the Ace of Pentacles in reverse and the Fool in reverse. So yeah, I mean, Seven of Swords. <laughs> it's like the same message, just playing out again and again, feeling like they've gone back on something. Um, almost like, you know, they've done something that was deceitful to their own self, but for a lot of them, this is also feeling like the, the connection here between themselves and the karmic partner or situation, it, there's also something deceptive there. And I feel like for a lot of them, it feels like it's not only from their end, but also from the um, other person. There's something there from the other person also that feels deceptive to them. And I mean, that, that could be an, anything. All right. It could just be, you know, that this person is, um, you know, not being very transparent about their intentions um, all the way to, you know, being unfaithful. OK, if it's a if it's a romantic partner um, to being manipulative, it could be it could be anything. But they feel like there is something deceptive here. And it could even just be, you know, the fact that um, some of them are together just for superficial purposes. Okay, because they're definitely not feeling like there's a potential here. They want that door closed. That's why the Ace of Pentacles is in reverse. Um, plain and simple, right? They're feeling like this just cannot go anywhere. But there's also like some kind of a sense of risk here that they're feeling within this connection. And I, I don't know what that is. So we'll see. Let's clarify some of these. had the seven of wands flip over <clears throat> yeah definitely feels like they're kind of guarding themselves protecting themselves from this keeping their distance as i said all right let's just clarify that top row as a whole which is what i said about them going back or not fully executing a particular decision. All right, we have the King of Wands, the Seven of Pentacles in reverse, yep, and the, the Nine of Swords in reverse. Okay, yeah, see, so it's like, I'm telling you, this is somebody who d has taken some action. All right, somebody who has taken some action on the fact that they feel like, you know, this is not the situation that is in alignment with them um, because they felt like, you know, there's just no really moving forward. There's no, you know, finding a resolution to whatever their issues are. 
um, just feeling very incompatible with this situation. So they did take some action, but as I said, um, it didn't. That action did not yield the full result of what they wanted. I feel like you know they either um, didn't put enough effort, or they didn't have enough determinism, or there was some kind of a fear that got in the way, or some kind of an anxiety, like something scared them or something um, stressed them out so much that they ended up not completing the process. Now, some of them may have stayed in some kind of like limbo, like in between kind of a situation, and some of them may have actually gone back. Okay, so let's see the second row. Uh, let me see that Six of Pentacles separately on its own, please. The Ten of Wands. Yeah, they felt some kind of an obligation as well, which again, as I said, you know, it stems from a low sense of self-worth. Um, for some of them, this may have even been like, you know, feeling like they need to prove themselves either to their own self for guilt that they may have felt or um, to other people. But there was definitely some kind of an obligation or a responsibility where they felt like they needed to um, give to this. I actually want to clarify all of these separately now. <laughs> Let's see the King of Swords. Rise the King of Swords here. Did this almost want to flip over? I got the King of Swords again. Um, so yeah, I feel like it really is what I said um, before, right? They had uh, they had made a decision, and they're very much aware of this. They're very much aware of why um, it didn't work out what they wanted to do that initial decision, right? Like I said, it's like they just didn't have enough determinism especially concerning their their own free will it's like they allowed others to get to them or some kind of a belief that may stem from others right like society so let's see justice yeah nine of cups they want to be happy <laughs> that's the thing they know they're not happy they want to be happy i feel like there's a lot of disappointment um concerning their own self they want to have this fulfillment. They want to make things right. They want that balance. And they also want that, you know, um, karmic balance on a subconscious level, right? Because some of them might not even be um, consciously familiar with what that even means. All right. But that's basically what this is in order to get to what they want. Um, they need to have that karmic balance. And I feel like that is what, again, also that they are being successful towards. Small steps, but... I feel like this is actually a pretty significant one. It's like, you know, they made a so-called mistake, which again, it's like there are no mistakes. They just were not ready. And they're actually learning from it. it it's like it didn't go to waste. It wasn't for nothing. Okay, so let's clarify this bottom row. Um, I especially want to understand this fool that is in reverse. Three of Pentacles and the, and the Knight of Cups in reverse. Okay, I see. So what they're feeling is a risk here is, you know, whether or not they will be able to um, come to some kind of a consensus here with whoever else is involved in their karmic situation. All right, now it could be, like I said, uh, I do the reading as if it's a karmic partner. This doesn't necessarily have to be the karmic partner. It could be um, in-laws, for example, or just anybody that they might have ties with because of this connection. They're feeling like there is some kind of a risk here or that um, it might just kind of leave things hanging in a way where they're not resolved, almost like, you know, loose ends. Um, maybe some kind of a contract that they have, whether it is formal or informal, it doesn't matter. But by pulling away, right, the Knight of Cups in, in reverse, um, there's a risk here that they feel might, I don't know, um, either influence them or there's just something about that risk, especially concerning being able to work something out. And for some of them, this could be as simple as actually, um, a group, if, it, if it's a marriage, for example, it could be just, you know, really coming to an agreement with certain things, right? With assets or children or, you know, um, money. 
So that's just something that, I mean, even in their, in their emotional space, it's like it's still thinking about the practical issues. There, It's like there are no deep emotions here concerning this situation or this person. So yeah, that is what is going on. We didn't get anything really behavioral other than them just kind of keeping their distance. But I feel like these are the messages that Spirit wanted to get across this time around. So that's what we got. All right, so let's move on to the masculine's energy towards their divine feminine. So let's see. What is their general energy currently towards their divine feminine piece? Oh, all right, and we have the Nine of Wands, the Three of Swords, and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, this is a big struggle here, all right? Nine of Wands and the Three of Swords. This is a lot of pain. Um, the masculine is actually like feeling like they've been in pain for a long, long time. Whether they have been in denial of this pain in the past or not, it's like now, though they feel like this has been dragging out and that they've been feeling this pain for a very long time. Um, I feel like just overall they're seeing the connection with the feminine as something that is very painful, something that is very difficult. Um, we do have the Wheel of Fortune here though at the end of this, so I feel like, you know, they could be shifting this mentality, like just seeing the connection as something so difficult and so challenging. Um, and you know, that it's, it's almost as if the masculine has associated the feminine with pain. Um, all this time and with, you know, various events that may have happened. But I feel like that's, that's shifting. Let's see what's going on in their headspace. What are they thinking in terms of their feminine? Hermit in reverse. I could have sworn I got another two, but no, okay. The Eight of Cups in reverse for the feminine as well. Let's get one more. And the Chariot in reverse. Interesting. It's like the masculine is just, um, <laughs> okay. Like, at first glance, I mean, just looking at, you know, everything I said about their energy towards their karmic partner and then seeing this, it feels like it's just taking a step back from everything, right? Or just, like, going backwards almost. But that's not really what's happening here. This is the masculine, actually, with the hermit being in reverse, yes. Having kept their distance, having um, possibly, like, isolated themselves from the feminine, um... The chariot in reverse, right? It's like, again, not really, not moving in that direction, right? So this is all things that they are aware of, right? This is their headspace. Now, at the same time, we have the eight of cups in reverse here as well. They have not been able to move away from you. They have not been able to get you out of their thoughts. Um, they've tried to keep their distance, but they're thinking that they don't, that's not what they want. That's why this is in reverse. Um, they're... It's like they've been tr trying to get you out of their mind. They're trying to not think about you, um, but they can't detach. They, they can't not think about you. I'm getting that this is all about um, actually putting in effort to not think about you. And the mere fact that they have to put in effort in order to not think about you, I mean, obviously, you know, that in and of itself says a lot. Um... With that chariot in reverse, it's like trying to hit the brakes when it comes to thinking about you. Um, so I do feel like you've been on their mind a lot more recently than before, for whatever reason. Um, I'm actually getting that for some of you, might not be for all of you, but for some of you, I feel like there have been some events that may have been happening for the feminine and this is what is triggering the masculine to think about you more and because these thoughts 
are disturbing to them because it can create insecurity or, you know, um, harsh truths. Yeah, that is what is instigating all of this for them to be thinking about you more. And because these thoughts are disturbing, as I said, trying to hit the brakes, trying not to think about you because it reminds them of the pain or whatever it is that they're thinking. It might be creating pain or it might be creating, you know, fear or something. Let's see. All right, we have Temperance in reverse, the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, and the Queen of Swords in reverse. <laughs> what is going on here? It's like, um, wow, in their general energy, they're all upright and then in their headspace and um, emotional space here, it's all in reverse. We're going to have to clarify. Um, but what I'm getting here is that they're feeling very imbalanced, which is actually, it makes sense to me, you know, because it's like they're, they're trying to contradict their own self and what they're actually thinking. It's like, you know, you're popping up in their mind, they're trying to hit the brakes on those thoughts, but okay, obviously, that's a contradiction. Like you can't do that. You can't just try to push somebody out of your out of your mind. If it's there, it's there. Um, so this is why I feel like emotionally they're feeling very imbalanced and possibly very um, like I feel like they go they're going through like extremes. And I think we do get this quite often actually, but. Yeah, with temperance being in reverse, there is no moderation. It's like, <laughs> if they gave in, then they're like obsessing, right? Or they hit those brakes and try to distract themselves with other things so that they don't think about you at all in order to escape those emotions because it it is associated with pain. It does create pain for them. And yeah, like eight of pentacles in reverse again. Um, Trying to not focus on you. Queen of Swords in reverse. Again, trying to not focus on you. But it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? It doesn't make sense to them either. So let's clarify a little bit and then we'll see, you know, where all of this is heading and, you know, what shifts might be taking place. Because, as I said, we have the Wheel of Fortune here upright in their general energy at the end. So this is shifting. Um, let's see, let's clarify the second row. Okay, Seven of Wands in reverse and Justice showing up again in the second row, right? See, it's in their headspace on both sides here. So they're really wanting to do what is right. They're really wanting to make a decision here. And they're wanting to make this decision even if it means them having to be vulnerable, right? Letting their guard down. So even though, as I said, right, they've been trying to block you out, trying not to think about you, that's the shift that is taking place is that they are letting down that guard. Trying not to think about you, it's, it's a, that's a guard. That's a protective mechanism, right? They're releasing that because they want to do what is right and because they are learning their lessons. Let's see this bottom row. I, I feel like it's like just, it's pretty much like a mirroring of their headspace, right? Their emotional space here. But let's see if anything else wants to come through. The Five of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. It's conflicting to them that they don't have this commitment with you. And that's what I was saying before. It's like that contradiction, right? That they're feeling one thing, but, but then trying to not feel that way or trying not to think that way um, or just not behaving in accordance to what they're feeling. So that creates a conflict here, and that is what is creating a lot of emotional imbalance, especially concerning the divine feminine. So if you are in contact with your masculine in some way and, and you see them just being all over the place, know that this is why. Um, I, I feel like they're going through some kind of a, of a mini crisis 
where all of this needs to get sorted out. And I do believe that a lot of this has to do with the eclipses, the eclipse that we just had. And it's just like kind of clearing, clearing all of this mess. <laughs> but in order to clean a mess, you actually need to bring the mess out into you know the forefront where you can see it so that you can actually then clean it up and organize it. Otherwise you're just ignoring the mess and that never helps. So that's what's happening right now. The mess is coming up to the surface in order to be cleared. Okay, so yeah, I feel like this reading is a little longer than usual. Um, see. I'm actually going to get some messages for the feminines and then we'll see what is coming up. Because we do have Mars moving into Aries, so that's actually going to be a pretty um, impactful event. Um, that's going to be very action-oriented with <laughs> and not allowing excuses. All right, but let's see. For the feminines, what do the feminines need to know about themselves? We have the fledgling. Okay, that's nice. Let's see what else. And we have creation. Okay, wow. All right, so the feminines are taking risks. Um, I feel like you're either taking risks or you're beginning to see things in a new way or actually behave in new ways. Um, starting maybe something new, you're, you're creating. And this creating, it doesn't have to be literal, although for a lot of you, it definitely is literal. For others of you, this is really just about, you know, creating a new reality for yourself, a new mindset right? Um, taking a risk. And for some of you, you know, that risk might be, you know, completely releasing this, just deciding to let it go or possibly even allowing yourselves um, to get involved in another um, connection possibly, or even just the idea of being open to that. Whatever it is, it is, it is something positive. Okay. So know that it is positive. Trust your intuition on that. Um, you are being guided in that direction, okay, if that resonates with you. Let's just get a couple more. All right, and we just have two. We have commitment and we have signs. Okay, yeah, so a lot of you might be getting signs concerning commitment, whether it be about your divine masculine or whether it be about, you know, what which way you're being guided towards for now at least, right, for the time being. So Follow the signs, you're getting signs, but they're going to be different for each of you, okay? There is no one right way for everybody. Okay, so whatever signs you are getting, pay attention to them. Signs concerning commitment, whatever whatever they are, okay? It might even be, you know, um, a sign telling you, you know, maybe a person that you've been talking with, you know, that this person is not um, going to be in your highest good commitment-wise. You know, trust that, whatever the signs are. It could be the opposite, whatever it is, though. Trust it. Um, okay, let's just get three tarot cards for the feminines. So I feel like we got um, quite a bit of messages for the feminines in the last reading last week. So let's see, anything else? All right, six of pentacles in reverse, the three of pentacles in reverse, ooh, and the ace of cups in reverse. All right, okay, the message is very clear here for the feminines. Um, this is you actually realizing that, you know, even if there is love there, okay, between you and your masculine, if you, if there is no equal reciprocity, if they are not putting in that effort, right, the teamwork, um, it's not for you at least at this point in time, okay? It, you know, no message has to last forever, right? Um, it could just be that it is for this point in time. And I feel like this is something that you have learned. You, you are not willing to accept attitude or behavior or, you know, wanting to stay stuck in a situation where you're not receiving and where somebody is not willing to put in enough effort in order to be with you and only you. 
to give you that love. Even if that love is there, right? They need to be able to actually give it to you in a practical way, right? Two Pentacles cards, both about giving or working together, putting in effort. So, yeah, I mean, even that Signs and Commitment card, it might even be pertaining to your Divine Masculine, right? For at this point in time. If you don't have that commitment from them because they are committed to somebody else, you're not staying stuck. You're taking a risk. You're the fledgling. You're, you're fleeing from that situation, energetically at least. Because maybe physically you're not there anyway, right? Okay, so let's see what is coming up. For the masculines in their karmic situation, what is coming up in the next week or so? Okay, we have the Ace of Wands, the Star, and the Wheel of Fortune. Wow. Wow, this is all about them having their hope rekindled, all right? The hope for change. The hope to actually take control of their fate. Take control of their destiny. Actually take control of their right to exercise their free will and go after what it is that they want. That is being rekindled. They're finding that motivation again, and they're finding that hope that they have what it takes to create the change that they want, right? Which we already know what that is. And again, it is something that has that they had already begun um, taking steps towards in the past, only to go back or to, you know, not complete that plan. So that motivation is definitely coming back. That hope is being reinstilled and moving towards making that change. And again, right, with the Wheel of Fortune, this is all about having learned lessons as well. Um, and as I said in the previous reading, it was all about them, you know, um, living the consequences of their previous actions. Well, this applies here as well, all right? Those consequences are teaching them a lot. And that's what the Wheel of Fortune does, right? It brings the consequences of actions. And it's like they are learning from that. Not wanting to repeat the same mistakes. All right, so let's see their energy coming up towards their feminine. Okay, wow, a mixture of things. I'm telling you, they're, they're so imbalanced in their energy when it comes to their feminine. It's like just all over the place and back and forth and up and down. All right, Ten of Swords, Strength in Reverse, and the Knight of Wands. Um, yeah, I feel like there's still a bit of chaotic energy here. Um, definitely that pain is going to come to a climax. It's going to come to a peak with that Ten of Swords. Um, feeling the pain of the fact that they have not, you know, actually use their strength, use their determinism, right? To go after what they want. So yeah, I feel like that, I mean, we're going from the Three of Swords to the Ten of Swords. Um, yeah, that pain is going to increase, right? And then Knight of Wands, again, I feel like this is some motivation kicking in, but it's also really like, again, I feel like it's extreme behavior, like not really knowing how to, um, deal with this, cope with this, and what exactly to do. So I, I don't expect that they are going to be very stable in terms of, you know, making an offer or approaching you. I feel like for some of them, they might um, communicate with you with this Knight of Wands, um, but it's not going to be, you know, very solid or mature or stable just yet, okay? Um, because even with the strength being in reverse, I feel like it's it might come oh, in a really weird way because it's going to be stemming from a fear or it's going to be stemming from a bit of an insecurity here. As I said, I feel like, you know, um, 
the feminines, it's like, you know, you're like this fledgling, right? Taking a risk, moving away from this in one way or another, energetically, you know, um, creating your own thing. And this can be intimidating to the masculine. It can create a sense of insecurity, you know, that they might lose you. And then realizing that, you know, um, brings that pain to the surface. Could be something else that may have happened here. Um, but yeah, I do see them in whatever way giving off a little bit of an insecure type of an energy towards you because it's based in this fear of either losing you or having lost you or just the pain of their own self. Also not being able to, um, not having had come forward already, basically. So, yeah, <laughs> the movement is there. The movement is there. It's just a matter of it becoming more stable. But I, I feel like, you know, their energy coming up towards the karmic situation is very, very positive, right? In terms of making that shift that they want to make. But towards the feminine, they're still feeling a little bit shaky, all right? Um, because there's fear or there is um, pain. So, yeah, I feel like they're just not feeling very confident. They're not feeling very confident in themselves in terms of um, approaching you more maturely. Okay, so let's see. Let's close this out with an oracle message. Please do give me a thumbs up if this resonated with you. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, if this doesn't just sum up like exactly what I've been saying. It's the number 33 and it is chaos and conflict. And that is okay. Chaos and conflict needs to happen. It's that mess. The mess needs to be brought to the surface in order to be cleared. There's chaos and conflict in their connection with their karmic situation. There's chaos and conflict in how they're feeling towards their feminine because they're feeling that pain. Um, and they don't, again, I feel like they don't really know exactly what you are up to. Um, but whatever it is, you know, it's intimidating to them. And so there's a lot of chaos and conflict that is happening right now. But that is ultimately what leads to change. Like you have to face the, the chaos and the conflict. That has to happen in order to want to change something. If there is no chaos, if there is no conflict, there's stagnancy. There's not going to be a, a change. So, yeah, I feel like this is a very, very significant card right here and it's definitely representing the masculine i don't feel like this is for the feminines but of course you know um if that's the case with you try to just maintain your sense of balance as much as possible and know that this will pass okay masculines yeah going through this um, yeah, okay, so that is it. I thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Much love.